of people have been requesting for me to do an updated version of the Tempest Cleric that I have posted here on the channel. The reason why I didn't do such a thing previously is mainly because that character is a very straightforward build. Once you have established the equipments that you are going to have, nothing is going to change that much really once you reach the endgame. You're going to be using those very same items, although there are some little changes in here, variations and what have you. As for the leveling section, it's very straightforward. You're only going to be using just one little thing, that is going to be the Tempest Cleric. But anyways, let's just talk a little bit about it. So these are the abilities course that we are going to have. We are of course a cleric of the Tempest Domain. And yes, we have an uneven number right here. You notice that we have negative dexterity right there. The reason for that being is very simple. Uh, dexterity, we're going to be popping that up with the close of dexterity. There really is not much that you can do with the gloves in, in the sense of having gloves with this character. Uh, so yeah, we're going to be using the Globes of Dexterity just to have a little bit more of uh, initiative, although if you do not care about that initiative, then you can completely disregard Dexterity, it's not going to be important for this build. What it is going to be important is going to be Constitution that is going to allow us to sustain the Concentration, which is very, very important to us, and then Wisdom, which is going to be the main stat of the Cleric. The level 2 that you get on the Cleric, it's going to yield you Divinity Charges. What this thing does is that it increases the total amount, the maximum amount of damage that you can possibly deal once you get the Tempest Divinity. The spells that you are going to prepare, they are going to be up to your personal preference. There is just one thing that you are going to be needing as a must for this build. We're not going to be using Concentration, uh, so uh, Hold Person, Shield Fade, all of those things. Just make sure that you are not using Concentration. Take instead like the uh, kind of things that you have right here. Uh, Warding Bond, it's actually quite amazing for the little exploit that we have right there. But uh, just make sure that you pick Create or Destroy Water. The features that we are going to be using. The main thing that we want to focus on is going to be the uh, Warcaster. We'll talk about that a little bit later, but since at this point we don't have the spell that is going to require for that, uh, although this is an endgame build, so we're not talking about leveling right here, so yeah, there's that. Let's just take the points into wisdom. A level 5, you get the bread and butter of this build. And I would like to talk a little bit about this thing and the gameplay section, just to have in mind that this is what you're going to be doing 100% of the time. Which is why it's going to be so important for us to have Warcaster, but we'll get to that a little bit, a little bit later. This is very important, the Thunderbolt Strike, and as a matter of fact, this is going to be a quintessential part of the build. The Thunderbolt Strike is going to push enemies away from you every time yet that you deal damage, electric damage, or lightning damage to them. We're going to be creating puddles of water with this character, which is going to allow us to have quite a lot of crowd control, so that's actually quite nice. With our new feet, we can improve our wisdom right here, all the way to 20, at uh, level 8. And then finally, there's not too many things that you need to do until you reach level 12. At level 12, you get your final feats, and this is where you're going to have to make the final concession. You have two things that you can be taking right here. You have the Elemental Adept, which is more focused, more leaning into DPS, because is, they are going to increase, they, they are going to ignore the resistance to damage type of your choice when we cast the spells of lightning, which um, means that we can basically uh, increase the damage potential with this guy. Or you can take wall caster. Like I mentioned, it is very important for us to be able to sustain concentration. We have 16 concentration right there, so that should be more than enough. We're using heavy armor, we're doing our best to avoid damage but uh, you're not going to be immune to damage. The, the, this character doesn't have the potential capabilities of being able to be unkillable, like uh, using darkness or using the armor, the magic armor that a uh, sorcerer would be, 
We're not taking, we're not multi-classing into a sorcerer right here, although that is a PL that we can probably do something later. That's something that can be done as well. But that is not the case in here. So right now I'd say that uh, Warcaster is a little bit better just because we want for this guy to be a very high damaging and utility character. Now when it comes to itemization, not much is going to change freely from the previous one that we had. As a matter of fact, most of everything is going to remain the same. I do want to make a little parenthesis in here. The items that we are going to have right here, the quintessential items that we are going to need for this PLs, specific PLs, they are missable items that you can get on the first and second act of the game. As for the end game, just protection uh, things are actually quite nice, but they are not mandatory. Like, for example, the weapon. As for the weapon, right here I have the staff spells power. And this basically what it does is that it increases my bonus to spell save DC and my spell attack rules. Although we're not going to be using spell attack rules that much, uh, we're going to be using the resistances that the enemy has mostly, for most of the cases, most of the time. And we also have arcane battery, which uh, helps you to not use one of those beautiful spell slots that you are going to use. Then again, this doesn't work with the main thing that we're going to be using, which is coal lightning. So if this, even if this thing is, it is an endgame thing, we're not going to be using it for a main core quintessential part of the build. The shield right here, the Viconius Walking Fortress, the actual things that this thing has, like for example the spell god, when you gain advantage and saving throws against spells, and the spell attack rolls against us that have this advantage, that's actually quite nice. That's something that every tank should have as a survivability, but it's not an inherent parts of the fields. And as a matter of fact, if you're using this shield on a different character that is actually the tank of the crew, you might be as well be using the plus three uh, regular shield that gives you that extra armor class. Because that's what why we're using shield with this character to begin with, to get that extra armor class. For the more than that, the armor that gives you the highest armor class possible, being the case this one, 20 20 armor class with the armor of persistence so that's going to yield you a native 24 armor class which in a sense if you are playing on a crew on a party it's actually going to be quite nice and then you also have the cloak protection that is going to help you with the saving throws and the extra armor class right there that's a total 24 on top of that if you add a paladin or that is going to give you the uh, armor class uh, again with a sustained spell and with the haste from a sorcerer or mage or whichever character that is going to give you haste you can potentially reach 28 armor class which is more than enough to survive on your own uh, with this main character without having to worry about many things more one of the key essential parts of all of this build is going to be the water sparkers. Uh, what this does is that it knocks down enemies and it gives you lightning charges as soon as you begin the combat and uh, that is going to electrify water. Remember that our electric damage it doesn't matter where does it come from. If it is caused by effect that we are doing, you are going to knock down enemies. So all you have to do is just sit your cleric in that puddle of water. In most of the cases, the enemies are going to ignore it. If you have different crew members that are also playing around, a lot of people is concerned saying, well, maybe my crew members are actually going to suffer from that as well. Yeah, that is partially true. The thing is that this thing is going to prevent from the enemy for uh, like, it's going to make your character look less tasty <laughs> for them, giving you the choice, the chance of them uh, focusing a little bit more on the tank of the crew, maybe. And if you're playing solo, then uh, they are going to have a very, very hard time trying to reach you. The other synergy is going to be the Sparks Wall, since you're always going to be sitting on that electrified surface of a puddle of water, you're always going to not receive damage from that thing. So that's actually quite nice. I kind of like that. And then you can change the Blast Pendant that you have right here. The Blast Pendant is basically going to give you the action to Lightning Blast. And what Lightning Blast is that it increases the lightning damage that you deal provided that you use the lightning charges to cast this thing. Although, that said, this actually does use an action. So it is not ideal, you don't really want to be using this thing that much and you're not always going to have lightning charges. 
So that said, the other option that you can do is this thing, which is going to increase the channel divinity by one, making it, be, making it be able for you to cast it three times per long rest. So that's the maximum amount of damage three times that you can be casting against the elite enemies. And then the regular cast of lightning, cold lightning, is going to be used in trash. Not much more is going to be changed. The gloves, like I said, gloves of dexterity are actually quite nice, quite a good option. The rings right here, uh, they are going to be, you're going to have one free spell slot for you to change for whichever ring that you would like to be using, as well as for the helmets. And ideally, what you are going to have at the end of everything uh, is going to be a cleric that is going to be using coal lightning as a main means of damage. What I liked about that is that, yeah, maybe the area of effect, it's really not that high, it's not that impressive, but it's still an area of effect that if you have clustered up enemies, you can still deal damage to quite a lot of enemies, and if they have resistance to lightning and you're not using the wall caster, then you can be dealing a little bit more extra damage. You have the channel divinity, the for the divine uh, lightning damage three times so that's actually quite nice as well you can be dealing the maximum amount of damage in that regard and if you're sustaining your concentration as well and you are maxed out you, you are at the end game and you have been leveling up and you're getting all of your spell slots you are going to be able to summon a cold lightning that you're going to be able to sustain that is going to have six to sixty damage and then again, if you do not lose concentration, which you shouldn't, you have more than enough armor class to be able to sustain it, and then uh, you should be dealing the maximum possible damage with this thing without having the necessity to waste the spell slots. That gives us the choice, that gives us the chance to be using those spell slots for something entirely different. You can be using those spell slots to heal your crew, uh, to use other kind of damage spells like Ice Storm and create more surfaces, to create more things, to have more control of the battlefield. Uh, there's many things that you can be doing with your spell slots and as a matter of fact the actual nice thing about the cleric is that he already has all of the learn available spells that it's always going to have available so there's many things that you can do like the flame strike it's actually quite powerful but more than anything it's a cleric that's going to be able to stand on its own without having to worry about many things and you're going to have access to all of your spell slots to heal your crew in the events that you do need to heal the crew which you shouldn't you shouldn't receive that much damage if you're building your characters properly but hey uh, sometimes your luck luck is not in your favor sometimes your rolls are <laughs> are just being annoying but uh, yeah you basically have the utility the entire utility of the cleric without having the necessity to manage things I know how frustrating can be like, eh, should I be attacking with the cleric? Should I be using the utility spells with this one? You're going to be able to use both of the bo uh, of the best worlds because you're not using, you're not spending spell slots on your damage spells because you only need to use one and it has to be and it can be the higher one. You can you only need to use the higher one and you're going to be able to sustain it for days and deal the, dam the most damage out of that thing because of the channel divinity and then have the rest of your spell slots available to you while you also have quite enough of crowd control throughout the battlefields. If you like the content, so like and the super appreciate it. No one has told you today that you are a gorgeous and beautiful beautiful person. You are indeed a gorgeous and beautiful beautiful person. I will be seeing you goddamn gorgeous and beautiful people in the next one. Have a beautiful day and goodbye.